Programming is about to change forever. But it's not as scary as you might think. Lately, I've been reading countless clickbait articles on how programming is dead and it's the end of the programming career. I've been reading these same types of articles for the entirety of my career and I've been in tech for over 20 years. I don't think it's different this time, but there are some major changes coming. In this video, I'm gonna talk about those changes and what you can do to prepare for them starting today. The most simple way to explain the change that's happening is that machine learning is innovating the way we make decisions and programs. We're able to take complex decision trees out of our programs that are hard-coded using if-then-else statements. We're placing those with machine learning. Let's take a music streaming service as an example. Using machine learning, as you listen to more songs, the service can build up an affinity profile based on your listening habits. And that affinity profile can be used to serve you song recommendations. Whereas in the past, we may have been forced to express these types of recommendations with complex, hard-coded decision trees. Now, data scientists have a menu of ML algorithms to choose from, depending on the type of problem that they want to solve. The systems of tomorrow will increasingly be infused with machine learning that iterates on recommendations, rather than baked-in, hard-coded intuition that requires code changes to keep up to date. What's interesting is that all of the sort of fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's being shared in the form of these sort of clickbait articles that are talking about the end of programming and the end of the programming career, they have one thing in common, and that's that it's different this time. Somehow the innovations happening in machine learning and let's call it AI are so profoundly different that they're going to completely disrupt the occupation of programming. Now disrupt potentially eliminate, very unlikely. I've been in the tech industry for over 20 years, and if I only had a nickel for every time that I heard it would be different this time, I would be a thousand there. So if we take a step back and ask ourselves, well, how does this change our day to day? It's important to differentiate the two changes that are happening right now. The first is that machine learning is going to make its way into the programs that we write. So we're going to be integrating with ML models much more frequently, and that's going to require new sets of skills. And then the second change that's happening is ML is being used in technologies like ChatGPT to auto-generate code. I think it's the auto-generated code that's so particularly scary for developers. But I think that if we can automate away the tedium, that opens up more and more time to tackle interesting problems. And that's actually what I'm leaning into is that there are a lot of opportunities to use this to just automate away the things that we don't enjoy doing in the short term. In the long term, I think it's even more interesting. One of the, the fallacies I see over and over again is thinking that this new technical innovation is going to be applied to the exact same types of problems that we're solving today, right? So the way I look at it is if we make radical innovations that actually make the programming we do today unnecessary, it's not the programming goes away, it's that we're going to be tackling a whole new category of problem. With the invention of compilers, we are able to spend less time writing tedious assembly language and machine code and more time thinking about the problems that we want to tackle in these much more expressive languages. So we work in tech to innovate, and some of those innovations will change the way we work. But it's really important to separate fantasy from reality. Mixing up recent innovations in machine learning and deep learning like ChatGPT, with Skynet-like artificial general intelligence that will usher in the apocalypse, doesn't help anything. Rather than focusing on what's totally outside of our control, let's focus on realistic changes that might happen in our day-to-day -day careers. The biggest change to come isn't the programming goes away. It's that the act of typing code will become secondary to the act of deeply thinking about a problem and solving it without code first. I think the future prototypal software developer will be a slower, deeper thinker, rather than a lone wolf that produces a high volume of code on their own. Code will still be valuable, but not quite as valuable as the research and design decisions that guide it. I bet that we're going to get into the era of the specialist. We're going to get into an era of teamwork, and this is going to be a good thing, right? Like a talented distributed systems engineer working with a statistician DevOps engineer together as a unit, thinking about what they're doing, really planning it out and doing so intentionally. So. If you're worried about all of the programming jobs going away anytime soon, don't be. 
I think all of your experience in programming is just going to be slightly mapped to reading systems, comprehending systems, designing and thinking. And maybe it could be a really good thing, like a lot less pressure just to code faster than everybody else around you in order to survive. Let's think about a game like Baldur's Gate 3. We need a diverse party, like a tank and a healer and a damage dealer. Each person on this team is specialized, but success largely depends on the team's balance of skills and their ability to work harmoniously together on a problem. Over time, it's that team output, that team success that's going to be indexed heavily on rather than today, which is the really like fast twitch generalist 10x programmer. Let's talk about the things that you can do to prepare for this and unlock your capabilities in order to get ready and tackle those interesting problems of the future. So one of the most important things I think we can do just to take a deep breath is just start to understand a little more about what AI and ML is and isn't. And a good place to start, I think, is deeplearning.ai. They have courses that are excellent, high level, where pretty much anybody, regardless of your point A today, can just dive in and start learning. To leverage some of that learning, after you get through maybe some basic courses like AI for Everyone, I would start just building simple programs in ChatGPT to understand its capabilities and limitations. Check out Hugging Face. That's a little more geared towards the actual model side of ML. And it's really cool. Like there's a lot of free open source models. There's a lot of data sets and you can like really start playing around with ML in a, in a sandboxed environment. On that note, you'll quickly realize that you probably need to know a little bit about Python. It's just become the lingua franca of machine learning. And so it can't hurt to prepare yourself for what's to come. At the very least, I would recommend making Python your second language, if not your first. So to wrap this up, I think that AI is definitely here to stay. And by AI, I mean machine learning. I think artificial general intelligence is a ways off, but the AI that we have today is here to stay. It's going to get better. Machine learning is here to stay. It's going to get better. And the types of problems that we work on are going to get more and more interesting. I think if we can automate away some of the tedium and get into super interesting problems, I think it's going to be actually a great time to be a programmer over the next 10 years. So... With that in mind, I think the key thing is this is a fast changing profession. Keep it in perspective that we should always be learning, we should always be curious, and we should always be studying. So keep your saw sharp, and I'll see you on the next video.